and welcome to this week's episode of The Good Round Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, uh, firstly, a big thank you to everybody that watched uh, last week's episode of the show, commented, liked, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, we're one week into the uh, the lockdown here in the UK, and uh, we are still trading. Uh, we are still trading online, and I'd just like to say a big thank you to uh, all the customers that have, uh, have made purchases, and... Uh, uh, it's it's you know, very much appreciated. Uh, I mean, you know, I think we'll be in the fortunate position of still being able to carry on business once this is all over. So, assuming it doesn't last for for too many months, um, I mean, even that's going to going to going to strain things. It has to be said. Um, but your continued support is uh, very much appreciated, and um, well. I hope you guys, uh, you know, if you're if you're uh, quarantining or furlonged or whatever the case may be, uh, and you have time to kill, just have a look back at some of the some of the old episodes of the show. There's enough of them, and um, you know, marvel at uh, where we've come from and to. But um, anyway, so um, today's episode of the show, as you can see from the title page, is uh, the new releases, the March releases from James Eady. Now. Um, we were originally going to be showcasing these uh, in, at the March Whiskey Tasting, which was unfortunately cancelled. And so what we have done is we've rearranged um, uh, to do the James E.D. Uh, evening in September when they do their next batch of releases. So um, hopefully, you, you know, we will, uh, coronavirus will be well and truly in the, in the rear view mirror by then and we'll all be hopefully getting back to somewhat of a normality by then and um, um, but uh, coming back to, uh, the, to the, the, the lineup to, for today's episode of the show I have actually pre-ordered uh, some of these whiskies and uh, I mean I wasn't going to be fair uh, because we year-end stock take in April at the end of April I tend to try and avoid ordering stuff in April because well you know just more to count at the end of the day um, and um, doesn't make my figures look better if I don't as well uh, anyway so what I've done is I pre-ordered some of these I'm hoping by the time we get to the end of the episode you'll have figured out which ones they are um, but if you haven't I'll tell you at the end anyway and they are up on the website uh, available to pre-order um, so you know if any of the the ones that I've decided to stock uh, are um, sound cool and sound the sort of thing that you would like uh, then feel free to, to pre-order them um, if you like the sound of the ones that I'm not quite so, so keen on um, or maybe I'm not maybe there isn't any that I'm not keen on at all you never know um, you're probably able to find them elsewhere um, certainly uh, you could have a look on James Eady's website because I believe they're compiling uh, a stockist's uh, list on their website so uh, yeah, or some led to believe anyway. Uh, so right, okay. So um, yeah, so we have a, a selection of a, a, a brand new stuff, which is always really nice to uh, to receive. So um, I think it's probably enough waffle. Let's uh, let's have a look at the lineup. Right, okay. So we're going to kick off with the uh, two of the um, small batch releases. The first one is a 10-year-old uh, Milton Duff, uh, about 46%. Uh, it's comprised of two first fill bourbon casks, those being 701556 and 701562, uh, bottled uh, in uh, February of this year. Uh, second of the two small batch releases is a 9-year-old Ardmore, Again, bottled at forty-six percent. Uh, this is comprised of three refill casks, uh, three refill bourbon casks. Uh, cask numbers five one, uh, five stroke one, six stroke one, and eight stroke one. Uh, right, moving on. This is the lone uh, single cask bottling that uh, uh, James Eady have done this month. Uh, it is uh, at an eleven-year-old Linkwood. Uh, it is a recharred Hoggy uh, 300025, distilled in January 2009 and bottled in February of this year, like they all are. Now, as you well know, uh, James EDR pretty well known for finishing. Uh, they like to 
finish uh, a number of their, their whiskies in um, slightly less usual um, sherry casks and we have uh, have some obviously released uh, this month the first of which we'll be looking at is a Glen Spey uh, so basically it is a 12 year old uh, it was uh, the, the cask number 805411 distilled in September of 2007 and spent 22 months being finished in first fill power Gittardo. Uh it was bottled at 60% so of alcohol there um, and as you can see quite uh, quite deeply colored uh, the second of the uh, two the three uh, finishes is again another Paolo Cotardo finish this time it is a nine-year-old Ben Ryak uh, it was distilled in May of 2010 uh, cask number 348031 but this only actually spent 12 months finishing in uh, ex Paolo Cotardo casks so obviously the Glen Spey took longer to um, um, well it took longer <laughs> I was going to say something pithy there but uh, we, we'll save that until later uh, and the last <laughs> the last bottling we're going to look at is um, a, a, an 11 year old Ben Rins this is an Oloroso finish uh, in actual fact spent 36 months finishing in an ex first fill oloroso pot but and um, in actual fact i was expecting that to be a lot darker in color to be honest with you but uh, there you go it just shows that um, you know, not all, always the oloroso is not always the darkest of the cherries obviously the, and the px has a tendency to be uh, the darkest and thankfully there's no, no px finishes Whew. um Right, okay, so, uh, yeah, like I was saying, this is a, an 11-year-old Ben Rins, uh, distilled in September of 2008. Uh, the cast number was 4 stroke 1, and it was bottled at 59.9. Incidentally, I, the, uh, the Ben Ryak was bottled at 62.4. So, yes, plenty of alcohol there, which we always like for lunch. <laughs> anyway, um, right, so that's uh, this week's lineup. Let's... Uh, Let's kick off with a bit of Milton Duff then, shall we? Okay, so let's kick off with the uh, the Milton Duff. Let's see what the nose goes on this end, shall we? That's a nice nose, actually. Uh, it's it's gristy, it's barleyed. And for first fill um, American oak, it really is quite, quite well balanced. I mean, it's not... It's not a big vanillary bourbony oak fest. Um, it's it's really nicely balanced. Um, I mean, I'm getting plenty of the of that uh, you know herbal Milton Duff character. Um, there's a a sort of fennelly kind of note, a little bit of maybe bracken as well, um, a touch of toffee, uh, a little bit of honey. I mean, that's a lovely nose. It's really well balanced. Um, and there's a, 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 a nice citric note as well, a little bit of lemon. Um, you know what, actually I think that's pretty complex. Um, and um, like I said, for a for first fill uh, American oak, um, pretty balanced. Anyway, let's see what it sounds like. It's a little bit more oaky on the palate. It kind of kicks off with um, a slight sort of cough, toffee, creamy um, vanilla. But then there's a little citric note that kind of comes through. I'm getting the barley. I'm getting, again, the Milton Duff herbally kind of notes. Um, and then it kind of moves back into the oak. So I'm getting things like praline, nuts, honey, um, it's wonderfully soft, it's really silky, it's smooth, um, it's a lovely whiskey. I mean, it's got progression, it's possibly a little heavier on the oak on the palate than on the nose, but I don't think it's an oak monster, I don't find think it's unbalanced. Um, I think it's quite nicely layered and it's got progression and I think that's, that's a really nice starter, I think. 
Okay, so let's move on to the Ardmore. This is nine years old. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Do you know what? By Ardmore standards, that's actually quite restrained. It's it's got sweet barley. It's got sooty peat, heather, earth. Really quite fragrant in actual fact. Almost, almost floral. Um, and I, I don't tend to get that sort of fragrant floralness from Ardmore, to be honest with you. Not normally. Um, I normally tend to get obviously more peat. I mean, but this isn't isn't as isn't as heftily peated as some Ardmores I've come across. I mean, there's a little bit of vanilla. There's a little bit of tar. There's a, there is some peat there, so it's not like it's completely lacking in the peat department. But it's, it's really restrained. Um, and uh, I. But I like this. I think this has got like, a really nice character. Um, uh, so I think sometimes Ardmore can be a little one-dimensional, a little bit too much peat orientated and not enough spirit. But I don't think you can you can uh, accuse this of having uh, no spirit character because it's uh, yeah lovely, really nice. Got a lovely sweetness to it as well, which is is working nicely with the subtler peat. I think if this was heavily peated, I wonder whether that would work quite so much. But anyway, let's see what passes. Like. richer, waxier, fuller. Again, really subtly peated, but I'm getting lots of barley, I'm getting apricot, I'm getting, like I said, that sort of slightly heavy, waxy kind of fruit character. Um, it's got a dry, herbally sort of peat. A um, little bit of soot, a touch of bitter oak on the finish. Um, I think that the, the the peat kind of takes a while to kind of get going and, and it sort of comes through more on the mid palate and on the finish than it does at the beginning. And so you get that lovely kind of um, waxy fruit character to start off with, which I think gives it a really nice grounding, gives it a nice mouthfeel, um, nice weight to it. Um, yeah, I like that. Again, I think that is really, really impressive and, you know, going on the shelf at $39.95 I, I, yeah, that's, that's damn good incidentally, the Milton Duckwood is the same price as well how do I know that? Mm, mm. anyway, um, that, that's good, like that, that's impressive <laughs> let's uh, move on to the uh, single car Slinkwood see what those gives on this hand, shall we? really cereally, um, quite malty, oat cakes, honey, quite, it's got some raisinated, whiny, herbally sort of fruit, touch of treacle, but the cask is certainly, um, Certainly in control here. I mean, I'm not really getting any of the any linkwood character. I'm not getting any, um, and and the, the longer it sort of stays in the glass, the more of the of the cask, uh, if, if any more, it really needs to come through. Come so, um, it's very clean. There's no sulphur notes. There's no no off notes. But um, it's just pretty much recharged cask. Um, anyway, let's see what that's like. Gritty, dried fruit, charred oak. There's some pleasant citric moments, there's some candied orange peel, um, raisinated fruits, whiny fruits, 
but again, uh, it's there's there's no no Linkwood character, um, and um, it is all pretty much about the cask. It's got a, a bitterness uh, on the finish, um, coffee, pepper. Again, very clean. You know, if this is the sort of thing that floats your boat, then you're going to love it. For me, there's no real light and shade. It's all about the cask, uh, and very clean it is too. I'm going to put a little drop of water with it and see if that does indeed just kind of knock back the cask a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm getting a little bit more citrus now. I'm getting a little, I'm getting tangerine and orange. But it's not as complex. Um, it's a lot simpler now. It's got that sort of caster sugar sort of um, note, and it's a bit sweet. And let's see what the pass on. Oh, it's got a bit, bit, of, bit of a bit of twist in the finish now. Um, again, it's a bit like the palette. It's a bit lighter. It's a bit less complex. Um, there's less wood, but there's the, 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 again the, the linkwood character really hasn't kind of come through. I mean, there's a a little bit of waxy fruit maybe. There's a little bit of maybe a little bit of barley, but again, it's it's very very whiny and oaky and you know I, like I said I'm sure there are people that, that would absolutely love this for me just doesn't have have the uh, the balance right okay so moving on to the first of the two Palo Cotardo finishes this is the Glen Spay 60% let's see what those give us You know what? Glen Spade, light spade, elegant, delicate, grassy. You would have thought that 22 months finishing in a pile of potato hoggy wood, well, hoggy, uh, well, I don't know whether it was a hoggy or not, uh, probably a butt, I would imagine. Uh, it would hammer this. And um, you know what? It really. <laughs> I'm surprised at how well the, the spirit has handled it. Yes, it has a lot of that grapey, nutty, whiny, sultana, coffee, honey. But I'm getting oodles of, 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 of uh, grassy, citric um, barley. It's, it's really... It's, it's a breakfast malt, it's honey, it's malty, it's it's kind of, you know, nutty. It's like, you know, I'll put this on my honey nut cornflakes. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of sherry here, but I'm I'm blown away that the, the, the Grand Spade really stood up to this. I mean, um, yeah, this is almost two years finishing. I mean, I'm guessing that, that the Palo Cotado butt was probably a refill butt. Uh, I mean... It, it, Consider well, if you think about the other two, which spent considerably less time. Um, maybe this wasn't quite such an active cask, um, and and you know maybe at sort of twelve months, this really didn't sort of showcase. I, I mean, I think I would have probably stopped it at twelve months personally, yeah, but that, that's me, you know. Um, I would have gone even subtler on the cask, uh, but you know. Yeah, fair play. I, I think the nose on this is really well balanced. Um, and, um, you yeah, know, all right, for a 12 year old, it's a touch on the expensive side. It's 62.95 on the shelf. But, you yeah, know, like I said, you know, if you're going to do sherry, if you're going to play around with sherry, why bother with the bloody old Oloroso all the time? Palacatado is just gives you something different. Finos, all these kind of different sherry casks will, will give you something different. It doesn't always have to be big and leafy and oloroso -y. Um Anyway, I shall um, let's just taste taste the damn whiskey, shall I?
intense, grippy, nutty, whiny, more emphasis on the cask. Although I can sense the Glen Spey kind of coming through on the finish. It's, there's a, a little grassiness, there's a, a little barley, and I think sort of, you know, with a little drop of water, we'll just knock back that sherry note a bit and um, and we'll probably get more of the uh, of, of the spirit character coming through but again 100% clean no sulfur notes really nice um, yeah let's uh, let's have a look and see what a little drop of water will do and to be honest with you I mean that's 60% and you don't feel it I mean yes alright there's a little tingling um, at the edges of the tongue but you know it's not like your tongue is being hammered by alcohol the alcohol is all really really well contained um, let's, uh, let's see what the nose is like now yeah that's lightened the sherry we're now getting more kind of citrus we're getting tangerine orange barley and, and more of the spirit is, is, is coming through this is yeah that, that's lovely, absolutely lovely. Um, Sewer pass right now. Again, the sherry is lightened, it's still nutty, it's still there, still sort of got the dried fruits, it's still got um, the intensity of character, but it's lessened a little bit, it's allowing the spirit to come through. I'm getting the barley, I'm getting the, the sort of almost white fruits, and I'm getting a little minerality uh, and grassiness, and um, it's still a little tannic, I will give it that. I mean, it's got a grip to it, but again, it's all quite harmonious in my, my opinion and I really like that. Um, mm, yeah. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Ben Ryak. So this is nine years old and this was 12 months uh, finishing in uh, the Palakotaro cast. Let's see when those goes on this. Now, totally different. I mean, these, this, these are. Oh, this was obviously a lot more of an active cask. I will get the words out. Um, green nuts, grapey, whiny, sherry. Absolutely no spirit counter whatsoever. I mean, I would have thought that Ben Ryak would have really stood up to sherry. Uh, I would have expected, you know. Although Ben Ryak can be a bit of a funny whiskey, it has to be said. It can be a bit hard going at times, it has to be said. Um, but I would have thought, I would have expected it to sort of at least deal with the sherry. Um, and, um, but I mean, I'm getting no character. I just, just all I can smell is, is, is uh, sherry cask. Um, and it is just light and day when you compare it to the to the uh, the Glen Spey you know you you think Glen Spey that wouldn't have worked but lo and behold it did you thought Ben Rins uh, not Ben Rins sorry uh, Ben Ryak would would work and become you know it's just sort of plus whiskey um let's see what the parts like a bit of a bit of finish. Alcohol really punches through on the finish. It kind of starts off a bit, you know, a bit insubstantial to, to a certain extent. It does kind of pick up the pace a bit as it sort of progresses. Um, but again, it's all the cask. It's a bit of tannins. It's whininess. It's, it's nuttiness. I mean, green nuts, olives, you know. I mean, it's, you know, Palo Cotado. I mean, you can taste Palo Cotado, honestly. I mean, it really is that much cask orientated um, that it tastes like a Palo Cotado um, sherry. Um, loads of nutty, toasty oak on the finish. I mean, yeah, that's that's nice. I mean, you know, good quality cask, impressive, but I've got no spirit character. I've got no balance. You know, I may as well just be 
drinking a, a sherry um, in, in reality. It's a bit, like I said, it, it doesn't have the balance and the complexity and the interest that the Glen Spey has. Um, for me, you know, I mean, I'm not knocking the quality of the whiskey whatsoever. And like I said, I know there will be people out there that love this kind of stuff. But, you know, could be from any distillery, really, because all you're getting is just cask. Uh, let's see what the nose does now. It's, it's simpler, it's a bit sugary, it's again... It's pretty much like it is neat. I mean, there's again no spirit character. It's all it's all pretty much oak. Um, let's see what that's like. <coughs> God, dear God, that got me. Um. Yeah, it's it's like the um, it's like it is neat. It's all about the cask, and you know I don't want to labour the point. Um, but it's it, it really doesn't sort of float my boat. Right, okay, and on to the final whiskey of uh, the day. This is the eleven-year-old Ben Rins. Um, so. 36 months in Ex Oloroso. Here goes. Clean. No sulphur. No distillery character. Uh, plenty of Oloroso. Um, sweet raisinated fruit. Dried apricot. Almond. A little licorice. Um, ginger. I mean, again, really clean. Um, I mean, I, I'm getting a little more of a, a feeling of spirit character beneath the sherry, unlike on the the, um, the Ben Ryak, which really didn't actually even come come close to coming through. Um, and again, I I would have expected the Ben Rins to be. I don't know. Uh, I mean, again. Mm, ben Rins, a bit more weight to it, a bit more depth. Um, and again, I would have expected the Ben Rins to sort of, you know, cope with the sherry a bit better. But you know, it's a little, little raw has to be said. Um, let's see what that's like. Again, it's a bit raw, it's a bit tannic, it's a bit green nutty. Um, I mean, there is, like I said, a sensation of spirit character in so far that I'm getting some maltiness um, and and some spirit notes. But again, you know, I could, I wouldn't be able to tell you where that came from. I, I mean, Ben Wright, uh, well, Ben Rins at the best of times is a little bit. Well, I wouldn't quite say homogenous, but it's a, it's not one that sort of like you know you sort of stick your nose in the glass and go oh yeah that's Ben Rins. It does tend to be a bit you know um, archetypal, I suppose, if if you like. Um, I mean, it's got some it's got some lovely sherry notes. It's got some walnut, some ginger, a bit of cassia, a bit of you know pepper, um, some spice grippy tannins, it, it's got a nice softness of fruit, sherry fruit, dried fruit, raisinated fruit, you know, but again, it's just kind of like, well, mm, I'm not getting light and shade at the end of the day. And, um, you know, you, you, you know me well enough by now that if you're going to sort of want me to um, get into a sherry finished whiskey or sherry matured whiskey, it's got to have balance. And again, this is just all about the cask. Uh, let's put a little drop of water with it and see if that uh, um, makes any difference. 
okay it's still a little bit herbal it's still sherry but i mean there's there's a little less intensity on the sherry um and, but it's still kind of you know leafy and oloroso y um there's maybe a, a touch more barley a little bit more orange but again it's kind of yeah like no like like it is when it's neat so let's see what pass on Still quite tannic, but I will say the fruit is a bit juicier. It's a bit better balanced in the sort of tannin versus fruit kind of um, steaks. Uh, but again, no real distillery character. Uh, it's it's pretty much all about the sherry. Um, clean sherry, nevertheless, but all about the sherry. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Right, firstly, a big, big thank you to Hugh at, um, at James E.D. for the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, I, 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 yeah, I appreciate the support, I appreciate the samples, and, you know, um, you know, everybody wants to sort of sell their whiskey at the end of the day, and, you know, Let's put it this way. You all know that I'm a bit hard when it comes to whiskey. I've got limited space. It's got to do it for me to sort of, you know, if I want to put it on the shelf and if I want to sell it. And the Milton Duff I thought was absolutely lovely. It's $39.95. It's available to pre-order and it is lovely. It's balanced. Uh, for first fill American oak, um, you suddenly, you first off, your first initial reactions is, you know, um, am I going to get too much too much oak? Am I going to get too much bourbon-y, vanilla -y and all that? But no, balance, absolutely lovely. Ardmore, again, $39.95, can't argue with that. Quite restrained from an Ardmore kind of point of view, not as, as peated and intense uh, as, as some can be, but it's showing some lovely waxy fruitiness and again i've got no issue with that whatsoever i would quite happily recommend that um the link wood not really my thing um too much oak and not enough um spirit character and that's pretty much uh, sums that one up um the glen spade now i like that you know i like different types of sherry casts. I like Pinots, I like Montelado finishes, I like Palo Cotado, you know, I get bored of bloody Oloroso. Um, but again, my my point that I always come back to is, is it balanced? Am I getting all the character? Am I getting character from the cask? Am I getting character from the spirit? And you wouldn't have expected it from the Glen Spade. I mean, it's 62 95 but you know what? I like that. And, you know, let's put it this way. You guys know me that if you like sherry cask whiskies and you're going to come to me, you're going to get a sherry cask whiskey that's balanced, that is going to have not just the, the sherry character that you love, it's going to have some distillery character as well, you know. Um, so I, I pre-ordered that. It's on the website and, you know, I, I, I'd buy that. Um the uh the ben ryak uh, it the, completely the opposite of the glen spay like i said i mean you know it was just raw sherry cask the, 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 the spirit didn't stand a hope in hell's chance to be bluntly honest with you um it was all about that sort of you know green nuts and and you know yes really interesting from you know a cask point of view but like i said you know if i wanted to drink Palo Cotado, I'd have a Palo Cotado sherry, you know, if I wanted Ben Ryak, I would go and get a Ben Ryak, you know, aged in American oak. Um, and pretty much the same for the Ben Rins. Uh, you know, it, it, again, you know, it is just one dimensional, too much sherry, not enough Ben Rins character, um, and it really just does not do it for me. And, you know, it's like, when... Yeah, I mean, when you taste the three of them, I mean, you know, and I, I understand that obviously you guys are not going to get this 
opportunity to do so, uh, not unless you buy three bottles of whiskey at sixty odd pounds. Um, you know, you will you'll, you'll see the difference. You'll understand what I'm banging on about is the fact that that, that these are all, or shall we say, that the Ben Rins and the Ben Ryak are just all about the sherry cask, whereas the Grand Spay is a balance, you know, it has the sherry, but it also has the character of the spirit as well. And at the end of the day, that is, that's what I want. So anyway, that's this week's episode of the show. You know, like I said, these are available on uh, the website or the three that uh, that I really like are available on the website to pre-order. Please do so if you like them. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm hoping your confinement will not last too much longer. It is really weird just going to work and there's nobody about. And anyway, good afternoon and good running. <laughs>